Well, it happened. I'm addicted to vinyl again. It had become a bit of a hassle, honestly, and my results for upgrades were really all over the place. But after trying out a couple different turntables, I've settled in and added a Riga Planar 6 to my two-channel system with the Riga Exact 2 moving magnet cartridge. Vinyl playback has never sounded this good in any of my rooms. Late last summer, I had kind of had enough of vinyl. Not the format. I had no desire to offload the collection I've spent a lifetime building, but I wasn't spending as much time listening to it as I used to. Like many vinyl fanatics, I had gone down a rabbit hole of upgrades and tweaks over the years and was tired of fussing, and I was really disappointed with the results. I needed a reset. So, without having decided on a new table to purchase, I sold my Project Debut Carbon, along with the HANA EL moving coil cartridge and all the various accessories that table required. I had a loner Music Hall Classic for a while, and it was an improvement. It looked nice, it was easy to operate, it didn't sound dramatically better than the project. Fluence sent out an RT85 for review with the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge, and for 500 bucks, I still don't think that you can beat that turntable cartridge combination for 500 bucks. And using those two simple tables reignited my love for listening to records. The ritual of choosing something off the shelf, dropping that needle down, and sitting down with the artwork to actively listen is something I've always appreciated. I enjoy a good streamer too, don't get me wrong, but I love how you really kind of required to pay closer attention when you're listening on vinyl, because you have to flip it every side. But as much as I enjoyed those two tables, I wanted to make this purchase something that not only would be fun and easy to use, but also something that would be an appreciable improvement in my sound quality. I wanted to really notice it, maybe even find an end game turntable for me within my budget. So. I dug in again and started doing research and started honing in on the Riga Planar line of turntables. I was leaning towards the Planar 3, but all my research indicated that the jump in sound quality to the Planar 6 was going to be a difference maker. Realizing that the external power supply I was planning to add to the Planar 3 purchase came packaged with the Planar 6 was the final motivator. This would be my next, maybe final, turntable. Research is an important part of a big purchase like this. With the internet and YouTube, we now have access to so much information about the different products. And there are a handful of accounts on YouTube that I refer to first when I'm looking into a new purchase. One of those accounts is Audio Advice out of North Carolina. Audio Advice does an amazing job of producing high quality, in-depth content, including product reviews, comparisons, and awesome home theater installation videos. Because I found myself digging very deep into the audio advice library during my turntable research, and because I know producing that quality content is not easy or inexpensive, it was a no-brainer for me to reach out to audio advice to make my purchase. With audio projects, it's certainly important to listen to a lot of different things while making your decision. But there's also the fact that no product will sound the same in a showroom or a friend's room as it will in your room. The same qualities will exist, but they'll be directly impacted by your room and everything in it. Over the years, I've heard a really good number of turntables from things I've owned since I was a kid to trade shows, friends equipment, and I knew for a fact that I had never heard a Riga turntable that sounded bad. So using my knowledge database and the research and what I already knew, I was comfortable ordering the Riga from a retailer on the other side of the country. Now, had I spent hours or days listening at a dealership here in Seattle, I would have absolutely made the purchase from them. But having only casually stopped into a couple dealers here, I really wanted to give my business to the team at Audio Advice as a thank you for producing the high quality informational content that I use to help me make my decision. I'm not gonna lie, I was really excited about this particular delivery. I have a rather large vinyl collection and I spend a lot of time listening. 
I had been without a turntable for several weeks before I locked in on my decision for the Planar 6. And once again, the audio advice team was on top of things. And a couple hours before FedEx rang the doorbell, I received an email from audio advice that included a custom setup guide for the Planar 6 specifically. It's a really nice touch. I'll let you in on another secret about me. I don't like doing unboxing videos, mostly because I'm too excited to get it out, and up and running to care about filming that process. But I did grab a few shots at various stages of setup with my phone quickly. I'm constantly sacrificing for all of you, so I hope you appreciate it. Setup was quick and easy, even with pausing to create uh, an Instagram reel. And before I knew it, I was up and running. At the time I ordered, the Planar 6 was offered in a single color Polaris Matte Gray, and it has an ultra lightweight plinth made of Tancast 8 polyurethane foam core. As of this filming, it's also now available in white. The lightweight plinth is braced on top and below with aluminum to maintain the rigidity. I'm not going to pretend to understand the science behind this concept, but what I will say is that it works in terms of rejecting bass resonance and footsteps in the room, transfer of vibrations up and through the system. It's a shockingly lightweight turntable compared to every other item I've handled and owned. The tone arm is Riga's very highly regarded RB330, and the platter is a dual layer float glass construction that, in addition to being very elegant, is weighted heavier to the outside edge to create a flywheel effect, in turn providing a more consistent speed. As I mentioned earlier, the Planar 6 ships with the Neo Mark II power supply in the box, which not only provides a clean and stable power supply to the motor in order to maintain that consistent speed, but it lets you switch between 33 and 45 RPM with the press of a button, whereas the Planar 3, which ships without the Neo, requires you to stop the turntable, remove the platter, and move the belt drive to a different notch on the pulley to change the speed. Now, having this feature with the button press was not something I was willing to do without, and it was a big factor in my decision to go with the Planar 6 over the 3. The Planar 6 was very simple to set up out of the box. Riga's three-point cartridge mounting system allows it to be installed onto the tone arm at the factory with pinpoint accuracy, and all I was required to do on this end was to add the counterweight and adjust the tracking force and anti-skate, which is again made very simple, and it was explained very simply in the audio advice video that I was sent. In no time at all, I was panicking because I forgot to pre-select what my first listening session would include. I went with Daft Punk first. I know that it's a brilliantly recorded album. It's very clean, with really good low end, and a lot of really fine detail. But I also tempered my expectations, knowing it can take a little time for a cartridge to break in. Expectations were immediately shattered when the bass first kicked in on this turntable. Low-end extension from this turntable is closer to the lossless digital music I listen to via my Blue Sound node than any of the other turntables I've had in my system. The noise floor is also astonishingly low on this turntable. Moving along to John Mayer's Continuum album sounded very, very clean. Imaging was more precise, again, drawing comparisons to tidal streams. Much like with the Fluence RT85, Jellyfish's Spilt Milk album sounds like I'm sitting in the studio control room listening to the two-inch master tapes playing back, but with the Riga in place, it sounds like a much nicer control room in a better studio with better monitors, and it's soundproofed better. Both sound fantastic, but the Riga is the clear winner for depth and size of the soundstage. I found myself actually repositioning my Beolab 8000s in the room, spreading them further apart. The other turntables I've had in here needed them closer together or the soundstage would begin to fall apart, but this big imaging from the Riga really allowed me to put about another foot and a half of distance between the speakers and remained really cohesive and produced just a giant soundstage, both in the up, down, right, left plane, but especially front to back. Vocals are able to be to present much further out front, drums spread from tower to tower behind the speaker plane. 
Classic rock albums like Raspberries and Nick Gilder sound larger than I've ever heard them. Television's marquee moon fills the room. Elements of jazz albums that have never been articulated on my turntables jumped out of the speakers, the breaths and stick noise and finger noise on the strings of a stand-up bass. It's just phenomenal detail. When I locked in on the Planar 6, the only choice I needed to make was what cartridge I would like to have mounted on the table. I chose the Exact 2 moving magnet cartridge rather than the Anya moving coil cartridge, in large part because of my previous experience with the HANA EL cart on my project debut Carbon. Up until I installed that HANA EL cart, my upgrades felt like I was making improvements. Minor improvements, but heading in the right direction. Moving to the acrylic platter, adding the speed box for more stable power and speed, etc., etc. They all felt like solid but small improvements. It was when I switched over to a moving coil cartridge where I felt things begin to fall apart. The Cambridge Audio preamp I was using was, by all accounts, a perfect match for the MC cartridge, but I never felt I was getting better sound from it. I felt like all the extra detail it was bringing out was really just adding surface noise and revealing limitations of the other items in the chain and possibly the turntable itself. I was really relieved with the temporary tables I had in place with moving magnet cartridges and the sound quality they had to offer. So even though all accounts stressed that the Anya cartridge would place this turp table in a completely different class, I chose the exact more out of safety than anything. I didn't want to make this investment and feel again like I was headed in the wrong direction. Will I pick up an Anya in the future and install it on the Riga? Probably. But for now, I'm still just blown away by the Exact 2 and the overall improvements I'm hearing. The Exact 2 is, is no slouch, for sure. I find it to be similar to the Ortofon 2M Blue from the Fluence table, but with much much more detail. It's still, it's really smooth and warm like vinyl should sound, in my opinion. Fantastic imaging, but also forgiving of older vinyl. Reminder, I'm a big fan of the dollar bins. Even when I crank it up, older albums with imperfections sound really just warm and inviting. A quick run through my project vinyl washer and a lot of those buck records are really good to go. This could very well be the last turntable I ever buy, and that's a good thing. Like I said, I might try the Anya cart, but this turntable is pushing the limits of the other components in my two-channel setup. I am, however, finding convenient excuses to buy more records, which may or may not be a good thing. We're not a breakfast family, but we've been to breakfast at Easy Street Records here twice since the Riga Planar 6 arrived. I can't even tell you how amazing and dangerous it is to have a record store close by that also has a cafe, a bar, and live music on Saturday nights. Each record I play reveals more than I've ever heard on vinyl before in my systems, sometimes more than I've heard from digital sources. I am absolutely in love with this Riga Planar 6. I've heard better turntables, but in my price range, this one's going to be hard to beat. Everyone's situation is different, but I'd have a hard time justifying spending more than this for my room and my setup. I had a hard time justifying this. So another big thank you to Audio Advice for the service, but more importantly for publishing so much great content that makes it easier to make decisions. If you find yourself interested in the Planar 6, I have a link directly to Audio Advice's website uh, for the Planar 6, their page in the description below, which is a great stepping off point into their various levels of video and website resources and down the rabbit hole that is collecting vinyl. If you do use any of the links below, know that they may be affiliate links and it's a great way to support the AV Nirvana channel and the content that we provide. So that's my review of the Riga Planar 6. I love this turntable. It's been very impressive so far, and it's reignited my passion for vinyl. What do you think? What turntable are you using? Would you buy a turntable like this, having never heard that specific model demoed? You have a local audio dealer that provides just a great, comfortable, friendly listening setup. What's the biggest surprise you've ever had the first time you turned on a new audio purchase in your room? 
Let us know in the comments below, and while you're there, please like and subscribe to the AV Nirvana channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again real soon on another Real World Review.